So you're thinking about moving to Portland, Maine, but you're thinking to yourself, I don't know what the best neighborhood is in the city. I'm just not familiar with it. Well, should you be living inland or more near the water? Is there a certain part that's more walkable than others? And what's the best neighborhood for my family and kids to live in? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today in this video. And yes, best neighborhood is fairly subjective. So I'm going to give a high level overview of the many neighborhoods in Portland to help educate you so you can make that decision for yourself. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to share my personal favorite neighborhood in Portland, Maine. So if you're interested in this, stick around. We're going to get right into it. This is your first time on the channel and you're interested in learning all things about Portland, Maine and the surrounding area. Be sure to subscribe below, turn on the bell notifications so you're the first to learn about the current markets around Portland, Maine. My name is Nick and my team and I, we receive calls, texts, emails every day from people just like you looking to relocate here to Portland. And we love it. So be it nine or 90 days, be sure to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, and we'd be happy to help you make the smooth move to Portland. As mentioned, we're going to jump right in and I got the map pulled up so we can kind of walk and talk virtually through the city of Portland. So this is just Google Maps, Portland, Maine. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. The first thing that we need to talk about when it comes to neighborhoods in Portland, Maine is on peninsula or off peninsula. So Portland's a little unique with the fact that we have water surrounding part of, we have a peninsula here in the city. So this is Bat Cove area where my mouse is. And most people define the peninsula as the 295 kind of corridor. So 295, um, is one of the major highways we have here in Maine. And it comes right down through Portland, or right along the coastline, crosses the, the cove, and then out the other end of Portland. So when you hear people say on peninsula or off peninsula, there's not a distinct line. However, most people would recognize this as anything on 295 towards the water, it would be on peninsula. And this is important because it's two different really just two different styles of living just because of the density of the buildings. So yes, you are technically still in the city of Portland, but there's a distinction on if you want, you know, more of the condos or older style homes that are, you know, right on top of each other, which we'll get to on say the West end top of the hill. Or if you want more of that neighborhood, you want a yard, you want a backyard, you're going to have to go off peninsula. Now, again, we're going to talk about it, but, there's restaurants, there's coffee shops, there's breweries in both locations. Um, I would say probably the bigger difference is, you know, the parking garages, the hotels, those are all on peninsula, the higher density areas. Most tourists that come through are going to spend their time on the peninsula, really the old port. Again, we're going to get right to that. So I'm going to dive right in and we're going to look at the top of the peninsula, which is the Munjoy Hill area. So other terms you'll hear people throw around is the East End, the Eastern Promenade. This is a one of the public boat launches um, for Portland. You can see it down here. Um, I wonder if I turn on street view, if that's a little easier to see. Yeah, so we get a little grass here. So Munjoy Hill, you're going to get a lot of the condos, a lot of the, you know, a lot of converted multi-family homes into condos um just the very tight-knit neighborhoods and then you have the kind of eastern promenade which is all this grass area um we have portland has a lot of concerts down here recent in recent years down by the water again the east end boat launch so um and the recording of this in April of 2022, there's been a quite a heated discussion um, in Portland on food trucks. So when this neighborhood was originally designed, it was a um, was actually more of a lower income part of town, and over the years has now become one of the more popular areas. But there's we've been having a lot of food trucks come out in the summer, and well, this road, the Eastern promenade is not really wide enough for that level of traffic you know especially when they have to close off a road or one of the lanes in the road 
Um, so interesting to see moving forward how that progresses. But anyways, Monjoy Hill, East End, beautiful area overlooking the water, the morning sun across the water. So on the other side, you know, so Monjoy Hill right now is a very popular area. On the other side of the peninsula is the West End. Now, this has always been a popular area. Main Medical Center is in the West End. Mercy Hospital is in, more in the center. So Maine Medical Center, our biggest hospital, is in the West End. You also will have all, let me know if I can see any here, but um, it's loading very slowly here. But the Western Prom, right? we have the Eastern Prom Road, and we have Western Prom Road. This is where you're going to see a lot of the giant mansions from the old ship building era you know all of our captains harbor masters massive massive homes there um quite a few of them have been um are now owned by the historical society um, occasionally we'll see one come on for sale from a family um but anyways that west end area nice walkable area again you get the homes kind of right on top of each other your typical city neighborhood so Again, though, very popular. You get um, a lot of the historical society is maintain, you know, has rules in maintaining the aesthetics of the West End. So that's also something to consider if that's something you really like is that historical 1800s vibe, the West End, a lot of the homes, you know, they haven't been updated to the vinyl siding. You know, they're kind of kept up with that more older feel. So I want to zoom out. The other areas we have on Peninsula is, and this is probably the most popular for our tourists, is the Old Port. And the Old Port, again, there's no real defined area. Um, I would probably define it personally from the main narrow gauge railroad all the way over to Becky's Diner. And the reason for this is if you ever were to visit or look at from the harbor at the city, you have East End and West End are up on hills and then there's kind of a valley and this is where the port is. Very obviously that's why back way back when that's why they put the harbor there. So anyways, the old port is the downhill slope towards the harbor and you have the East End west end up on the sides and so right about this narrow gate narrow railroad narrow narrow gauge railroad is where the hill starts to go back up towards the eastern prom same over with becky's iron so i would define the old port this area this is really the commercial area um lots of offices shops again this is actually called commercial street what you'll see is that the Hotels are here, and then in the summers, we'll start to get some cruise ships. It happened really the last couple of years, we're starting to get more cruise ships here. Um, and then, yeah, the tourists will, for the most part, stay in this old part area. So zooming out still on the peninsula is, we got three more sections quickly cover, is East Bayside, West Bayside, and then Park. Park, um... Park side, I guess is the best way to describe it. Anyway, so the East Bay side, most people would define this as um, Franklin, which is exit seven on 295, goes from 295 up over the hill. So the East Bay side would be kind of the commercial area. Con there's some condos, multifamilies um, going up the hill towards East End. And then West Bay side would be the other portion. So again, along that 295 area from Franklin all the way over to Forest Ave. West Bayside is where places like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, um, Intermed, which is one of the locally owned um, doctor's offices, they're all located in this West Bayside area. So that is pretty much the main neighborhoods that you'll hear being tossed around on peninsula in Portland. So now 
we really want to look at the off peninsula. Go zoom out. So the majority of Portland is off peninsula. And when we talk about neighborhoods, I'm going to kind of work my way from peninsula back towards the northern part of town. So the ba the first area we come to is the Deering and Woodford's Corner. So Woodford's Corner is on Forest Ave. There's restaurants just like Great Lost Bear right here. A lot of, um, we're starting to get into more of the, you know, still close houses, but you're starting to get more of the yard. Um, University of Southern Maine has an office here. Again, they're kind of in that gray area if that is part of the um, West Bayside, Deering Oaks, Woodfords. But you're, generally, you're in this path right here of we're com switching from the commercial area to more residential housing. So from Woodfords, we also have then Rosemont. Rosemont is southeast, south southwest um, a part of town. Again, we're in the neighborhood areas of Portland. So this is, we see a lot, a lot more turnover in this area, but that is really just because there's more residential houses here. So as, st again, as we move from on Peninsula, you're going to have more of the condos, multifamily rentals. As we make our way inland, we're going to have more of the single family homes. So Rosemont Woodfords, and then we're kind of into the Deering area. This is where you're gonna find Deering High School. You have Deering Heights, which is another popular higher and high high desirable area of Portland. Again, I would define Deering Heights from Stevens Ave all the way over to Forest Ave. So this kind of triangle of area. There's, you know, you're gonna find the more expensive residential single family homes in this area. And, you know, we don't see as much turnover here, but it's definitely a very desired area. You're gonna have the neighborhood feel, yards, the all that. So let me zoom out a little bit, get, let's get a little bit more barren. Oh. Don't want to be. Oh, now I got Street View on James. That was unintentional. Get out of Street View here. Um, okay, back back to where our, we were showing. So again, we have the so the Forest Ave. It goes from the Deering Oaks, the Woodford's Woodford's Corner. Then you over you have the Rosemont, and then. You have Deering. And so from Deering, we have, we have a couple areas that are important when we're talking about neighborhoods in Portland, and that is Back Cove, North Deering, and Riverton. So again, the, we're starting to get more inland. So at the beginning of the video, I told you I would tell you what my favorite location, favorite neighborhood is in Portland, and it's one of these three. So let's dive right in. So Riverton, again, you're getting more, you know, you still have this mix of commercial residential in the Riverton area, but you're starting to get, again, more residential, more neighborhoods. I would say Riverton versus North Deering is more commercial as you can, you know, this comes down into, you know, this whole area on the other side of 95 where my mouse is, this is all commercial, you know, you have Home Depot, we have BJ's, there's a Hannaford, there's an Allagash Brewing, which you might have heard before, and then the Dump. So Riverside and then the, the Riverside Golf Course, you know, Portland's golf, one of Portland's golf courses. So it's all on this, the inland side of 95. So again, Riverton would, cons would consider some single family homes in there. However, there's a, a large portion of commercial. And so then we have North Deering, which North Deering is a pretty large area, um, relatively speaking to the other quote neighborhoods that we have in Portland. So Route 100 
which changes names a couple times as you go through towns. But Route 100 is uh, goes from outside of Portland. Um, the next town is Falmouth. So it comes, Route 100 comes all the way down through and then goes all the way out to the, the um, back cove. So all the way out to 295. So this stretch in North Deering does have commercials. You can see here, Google Maps shows us that there's a CVS. Um, there's some sandwich shops. There's, you know, office buildings. So there's commercials, commercial zoning here in North Deering. But North Deering, as you can see, is very heavily neighborhoods. If you are looking for the larger, you're going to find the largest yards here in the North Deering area. So there's, it's fairly terrained here um, from a slope it slopes left to right so from the 95 to the right there's a slope actually one of these streets here i think it's this one is summit i zoom in yeah summit street so it's a um, funny story Sun summit street and route 100 is pretty pretty steep obviously not as steep as my hand but it's fair it's steep enough that at multiple times a year a truck gets stuck uh they're trying to go up the summit and the back of the car gets stuck on route 100 so again you got this slopage sloping um towards um from left to right as we're looking here at the map so anyways the next area and again this would be what my personal favorite area of portland is Back Cove. So Back Cove, it's, you know, the lots aren't very big. It's pretty heavily, you know, single family heavy, but it's nice, quiet neighborhoods. So they all, again, slope down. They slope from left to right here on the map down to Baxter Boulevard. So Baxter Boulevard goes around the whole back cove. There's actually a walking path. It's about 3.2 miles, 3.5 miles all the way around the cove. Um, if I zoom out here, it goes around the whole cove and then comes up across their sidewalks here along 295 to cross the bridge and then you go back down. So my favorite area, back cove, and you know, you don't have much commercial zoning in there it's almost all residential there's a few variety stores um, but for the most part it's single family houses and then you also have Chevers high school which is one of portland's private schools this one in this case being a catholic school and you have payson park so payson park there's lots of activities lots of the recreational events um They'll be held here, you know, baseball, softball, or what you'll see a lot in the fall is like fundraiser walk events. Personally, my family um, does a ALS defeat walk to defeat ALS event every September. So we participate in that, raise money for it. But anyways, this kind of park area right here, um, Baxter Boulevard, you'll see quite often is, there's a big tent there's a big event being held here because anyone that's walking baxter boulevard it's a great location that they'll kind of start and end here so yeah i really like back cove this baxter boulevard area um, you don't see as many houses for sale here um uh, the most you know some of the more expensive houses are going to be kind of along this, you know, overlooking the water. Um, and then you got some, you know, some decent sized houses, but you also will find a lot of tiny capes here in this back cove. But I think the quietness, you know, this is the feeling that you get driving in back cove um, is personally my favorite. And I think just the last part, I, you know, just crossed my mind thinking about that. And I don't really know what you would it doesn't really have a i guess google's calling it east steering but this is the last kind of section you'll see um in portland you know again does this is this east steering north steering that's up for debate obviously they're calling it east steering is the small neighborhood 
off of Veranda Street here in Portland. And there's some, actually at the time of this recording, there's a $1.5 million, you know, modernly built house overlooking the cove, right? This tiny, tiny little cove here looking back towards Falmouth. Um, so you get this little neighborhood here, which, you know, I just want to point out that it's, uh, I guess it's technically East Daring. So, but there's some nice homes here. You get, you know, you just get start getting the single family and then you get this big Presumpscot Street is commercial again. So rambling a little bit, but anyways, those are what I would consider the major neighborhoods that you have in Portland. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the biggest thing you got to decide and understand is the on peninsula off peninsula again there's not a clean oh you cross the town line here's the the demarcation point but you need a general sense of what people are talking about and the style of house style and neighborhood you're looking for will be affected by that so there you have it those are the neighborhoods in portland maine we have the on peninsula neighborhoods we have the off peninsula neighborhoods and then my favorite personal favorite is baxter Bullo baxter boulevard area back cove so hopefully describing and walking through these neighborhoods on the map helps you as you're relocating to portland have a better understanding of what you're looking for or where you might hear these local terms being thrown out and as i mentioned at the beginning of the video we have people just like you reaching out to us every day be it phone text or email trying to relocate here to portland maine in the surrounding areas so be it nine days or 90 days don't hesitate to reach out pick up the phone shoot a text shoot an email send a carrier pigeon over we'd be happy to help you make a smooth move here to portland maine